Well, hello there, friends. Fantastic video today. Potato croquette with ham and cheese. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make it. Remember, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up if you like the video, and ring that bell. Stay tuned. We're going to make them together right now. Well, hello again, friends. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make those croquettes. Today I'm making them with ham and cheese. You can make them with spinach. You can make them with sun-dried tomato. You can make them with mushroom. Make them with anything you want. I'm gonna show you how to do it. But first, we need to make some good mashed potatoes. So I have a uh, video on a mashed potato. Right there, there's a link in there. You can click on it and you'll see it. But this one, we're gonna make it with cheese. So you can watch those. You can also watch the other one if one day you wanna make a lighter mashed potatoes. First, we're using Yukon Gold Potato. You can't get Yukon Gold Potato, you can use a good baking potato. It'll be just fine. And I want you to cut it in big chunks. Less bigger chunks you make, less water it's going to absorb. Okay, so we're gonna bring cold water, big chunks, put some garlic in there. Don't worry about how much garlic you put in. You're gonna poach it. That means it's gonna be very mild. And then we'll put a little salt in there, friends. Just a little salt. Measure carefully. <laughs> It's okay, don't worry about it. Like making pasta, I put a little salt in there. We're gonna bring it to boil, all right? And when the potatoes are cooked, we're gonna process them, and then we're gonna add the cheese and the butter and all that stuff, and then we're gonna make the croquette. So, we'll be back when the potatoes are cooked. All right, take a few minutes. Okay, friends, the potato are cooked, and also, you see the garlic, the garlic, see? The garlic is, uh, is, is totally cooked. So all we have to do at this point, my friends, is to take them, and drain him, right? That's all we're gonna do. So I got a strainer ready in there, right? And all you do is you shake him. By the way, that was about three pounds of potatoes. I don't know if I told you that, three, three and a quarter pound of potatoes. Oh, oh, no, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Sometime I wonder. Now here we go, my friend, I'm putting them here now. Now I gotta wait, I gotta wait for them to drain as much water as possible. I don't want to wait too long, because if I wait too long, they're gonna cool and it's not gonna melt my cheese the way I want it to melt. So we're gonna wait a few minutes, like maybe four or five minutes. Uh, so um, then we'll put the cheese and the butter and all the stuff in there and then we'll make them, okay? But we're gonna wait, because they might not be too hot anyway. And, and plus we need as much water as possible to drain. In, 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 the, in the classical way of making those folks, you actually, roast the potatoes in the oven so they don't have they don't absorb any more water but it's a pain in the butt because you got to get the skin out and all that stuff so it's easier to do it this way and that's how you make a beautiful mashed potatoes okay so when they drain i'll come back and we we'll start doing the whole thing okay okay friends they've rested not too long because you don't want them to be too cold we want to make sure they're still hot enough so we can squeeze them and, and we can add the cheese, okay? So it's important, then they stay behind. I'm using a, a potato ricer. If you, if you don't have one of those, this is great. You can put it in the dishwasher, you can do whatever you want with it. It's really good. it's got a big mouth in it, so you can put a lot of potatoes in there, okay? So when you do a big, mash, a big um, uh, a batch of potatoes, see the garlic is gonna go right through it, right there. See, friends, look, very simple, right? Look, you put a potato in there, and all you gotta do is uh, squeeze them out. And let me tell you, my friends, this is what makes the most amazing mashed potato. Not this guy right there. See this guy right there? Go back over here, you. So <laughs> I'm talking to my potatoes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, look, uh, this is gonna make an amazing mashed potato. So friends, I'm gonna do all this off camera so I don't take forever. And I'll come back and show you the whole thing, okay? So give me a few minutes. I'm gonna do all this, all right? I'll be back in one second. All right, friends. So now the potatoes and the garlic I smashed, ready to go. So now, let's put the cheese in there. You see, and they're dry, the potatoes are nice and dry. They need to be dry, my friends. So, cheese. You can put uh, mozzarella cheese, you can put gruyere cheese, you can put Swiss cheese, put whatever cheese makes you happy, okay? And I got Parmigiano-Reggiano. Parmigiano-Reggiano, okay? Because uh, Parmigiano-Reggiano is the only Parmesan you should use, my friends, okay? so. We're gonna melt the cheese in here like this, and then we're gonna put a butter. Lots of butter, friends. Don't be afraid now. You want a good mashed potatoes? You gotta put butter, all right? 
You got to put butter, 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 butter. This is about six ounces of butter for uh, three pound of potatoes. So you can certainly add more butter, but this is good for this recipe, okay? We're gonna mix it all up, all right? And then we're gonna put three eggs, okay? And we're gonna mix them up really, really quick. Three eggs, that's gonna hold the whole thing together. It's gonna make it beautiful and rich, you see? Look gorgeous. Let's move the eggs fast when you put them in because your potatoes are still hot. They're not boiling hot, but they're hot enough. And then, so we want the, we don't want to scramble eggs. Salt and pepper. Now, my mom would not be happy that I'm not using white paper, but you know, I don't like white paper. So, black ham. I got this beautiful, um, uh, uh, it's called, um, Shoot, I'm forgetting the name of the of the ham. Tavern ham. We buy it at our public grocery store right here. Tavern ham. So I buy slices and are about an eighth of an inch thick, and uh, and I, and I cut it in little dice. Cut it in julienne and I cut it in dice. A little bit of parsley. That's going to give us beautiful flavor. Beautiful. You know, I love parsley. A little more reggiano. And right there, my friends, you have the making of a. But that a coquette, a little more salt. And right there, my friends, you have beautiful coquettes. You gotta mix them really good, though. Take, take your time to do it, but make sure you, you do it when it's hot. Otherwise, your cheese is not gonna melt and incorporate it well. That's the whole idea. You wanna incorporate it well, you see? I need to take a break because it's a workout, okay? So now we're gonna put this in a pastry bag so they look nice, okay? You don't have a pastry bag? Use a baggie. You know, you know, baggy, inside of the baggy. I just want to make sure that I'm well mixed, okay? And then I'll show you, my friends. I'm going to go over there, right in there. Well, you know what? I can do it here. I can do it here. I can do it here, friends. I can do it here. I'm going to do it all right here. The camera, as I said, right here. So I'm going to do it right here. Is that good for you guys over there? Oh, see? It's good. <laughs> just check whatever. Otherwise, I get Jack to say, uh-uh, we weren't ready. So look. <laughs> Pastry bag. This is disposable stuff. Like I say, you can use a baggie. That's how they come, right? So what I do, you can certainly do it. As a professional chef, we put it in the hand and we use a hand to, to scrape it. Look, just wanted to show you. I use this pitcher. You can use this pitcher right here. It makes it really easy for you to take and fill up your bag. You see, look. You go in there and you fill up your whole bag, friends. Look at this. You see, you get some kind of a pitcher, some kind of a container. You, you, I bet if you search in the house, you have lots of containers you can use to do this. This will make it easier for you to fill up your pastry bag, okay? You see, look. Right there, we're gonna put it all in there. You are, well, maybe we won't put it all in there because maybe it won't fit. Let's see, push it in. The idea is to keep it clean, friends. Keep, it, keep your, your pastry bag clean. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, you got enough, all right? Now what you do is take your pastry bag up. See, it's a little trick. And now you remove it. And, and now you gotta make sure though, at this point, and you twist right here. See, twist, and then keep your hand like this. Twist, and then you gotta cut this, right? So now we gotta think carefully here. Because we're gonna cut it, we're gonna cut it the size that we want. Our, let me get a scissors. I don't know which one's gonna cut better. We gotta say to ourselves, okay, how big do we want him to be? Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna make tubes, and I'm gonna get them right here. I'm gonna do it right here, so you guys can see it. I'm gonna put them on a seal pad, a, a silicone. If you don't have one of those, you can put it in a plastic wrap, but it's much easier than silicone mat, right? So now you have to say to yourself, how big do you want those croquettes to be? Do you want them to when you pick it up? You wanna go like this? So you say, well, I don't wanna make them too big. So what you do, you cut this, the size you want your croquette to be. So I would say this is too small. So <laughs> we'll go just a little bit. You know, I don't wanna go too small at the beginning and then say, okay, you know what? Not good enough. Okay, so now remember what I did, right? I twisted and I put this on here, right there, right? And, and then, so now I gotta grab it, I gotta twist it again. See, twist it again. And you hold it like this, you hold it like this, right? 
And now all you have to do, I'll show you. I'll show you, friends. All you have to do now is to take it and, well, that's too small. You see, that's too small. That's still too small. It's best that we do this. Better we do too small than too big. Because if we do it too big, then we can't go back. Ah, you watch, I'm gonna screw it up. Okay, this has to go. You, come over here, you stay. There you go. All right, let's see what we got. All right, now we're gonna go, and we're gonna go. That looks about the right thickness we want a croquette to be. So we're gonna go a little slower. See, I went a little too fast, the first one. And you'll see how we make them. All right, friends, I'm gonna to continue to do all this. And then when I'm done with it, I'm gonna put them in the freezer. And then when I come back, we'll finish them. All right, so give me a few minutes. Okay, I got a little extra, so I'm gonna make another one. I just wanted to show you something really important, friends, is when as you go, you never let go out of this, uh, these two hands right there. You never let go out of this. You always squeeze and then you twist. You squeeze and you twist, but you never let go. See, squeeze and, and continue and twist, but you never let go out of those two fingers, okay? You never let go. If you let go, you go like this, you know what's going to happen. All right? Little tricks. All right, we're going to put them in. Oh, we're going to put them in the freezer. They'll be back when they're nice and cold. Okay, friends. Last stage. We now take them out of there. You can put them in the freezer if you want, but in the, in the refrigerator, it's good enough. They want to be, uh, you, we want them to be slightly cold. If you left them in there too long, you may want to take a little spatula and just run it underneath it. You see? Oh, don't mess them up. Just run it underneath, you see, in case you left them too long. But just put them in a the fridge. Then you're, they're just going to get a little cold in case they stick to your uh, plastic. Or plastic, it's easy to remove it. But in case it's a so bad. To put them on the, um, in case they stick. To put them on the cutting board, friends, instead of dredging them in flour since they're fragile, we're going to dredge them in rice flour. Rice flour doesn't clump up, clump, clump up on you. And it still does the same thing. It dries them. And that's the whole idea here. We want them to dry. So we're going to put a little bit of rice flour right there. And we're going to roll them if they want to roll. If they don't want to roll, that's okay. We're going to make them round anyway. There you go. When they dry, they roll. We don't want to squeeze them. They're not rolling very good. That's because they're not quite cold enough. But that's okay. You see? We want them dry. Here you go. They're rolling funny. Mamma me. They're drawing like you draw, like you roll a, a gnocchi. Very, very gently with the hand. Just make sure you don't, you don't squeeze them. Okay? You don't want to squeeze them. We want them to be the, about the same size. So they're rolling. You see? Gently with your fingers like this. Just gently, right? All right. So we're going to cut them. We've got to figure this is about half. So it's about half. So we want to get about four for each one of our roll right there. Just about. So we got... One, two, three. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bigger. Okay, so we're gonna roll them. We're gonna put them on here, and then we're gonna put them in the egg, and then we're gonna be gentle with it. It's really, really simple, okay? So I'm gonna do all those, and when they're done, uh, remember, we roll them very gently, okay? Very gently, so they, they roll, they stay their nice shape, so we don't wanna squeeze them. The, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It takes a little while. We just don't want to squeeze them. There you go. All right? We want to squeeze them the other way so they don't, they don't get too skinny on us. Now, remember, they're going to get eggs. They're going to get bread on it, so they're going to get big. We don't want to make them too big because you want to be able to grab them like this if you want to grab them, if you want to do them at, the, at an old oval. Okay? So we cut them. We cut them. We cut them. And I always got a little one here. I guess those are going to be for me. I'm going to finish all this. And I'm going to get out there, we're going to put the egg, and we're going to put the, uh, the breadcrumb on it. You know what? I'll tell you what I'll do. Instead of stopping, I can do those later on. I'm just going to do a few of them right now together with you guys, all right? So, at this point, we've got to be very gentle with them. I have eggs, whole eggs, salt and pepper in the egg. I got an oil that is at 365 degrees. Really important. I got a very low flame. I'm maintaining it. We want to get the oil at 365, all right? So... 
We're going to go to the egg and we're going to go to brekom. Instead of plain brekom, I use panko. Panko is going to make them crispy, friends. When you buy panko, you notice this, it's very coarse, you see? Very coarse. So what I like to do is I like to make it finer. So I put a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano, just a little bit, measure carefully, right? And a little bit of Herbe de Provence. Unless you can find a seasoned panko, sometimes they come seasoned. But right now I'm putting the... Uh, the uh, 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 herb de Provence that I bring from Provence. That's where I'm from, Provence. Because most of the herb de Provence you get these days, they're not from Provence. <laughs> I don't know where they come from, but they're not from Provence. So we put this in there that gives a nice little flavor. You don't have to put a lot of spices and a lot of herbs in there, but maybe a little bit more. There you go, just a little bit more. And that's gonna make the bread crumb that's gonna make the bread crumb nice and thin so they really coat it all the way around it, all right? So here we go. That's it. Did I do it right? I did it perfectly. All right, here we go, you see? That's it. I use the same idea for my chicken milanese or a lot of things that I do fry the bread crumb. Okay, so now we're gonna put them in there. Now, it's best if every time in between all these friends, you refrigerate, they gotta be cold, remember? It's very important because if they're not cold, they're fragile. So. If you want to do them all like this, then put them in the fridge. Let them cool a little bit before you take them. Let them cool. Let me get a spatula in here. A little, little spatula. There you go. I have one right there. You want to make sure, because you want to keep your hands fairly clean. See, you want to keep your hands fairly clean. I do it all in eggs. You see? All right, so we're going to do all this. We're going to do them. Right, and then we're gonna take them from here, and we're gonna put them in here. Extra, make sure there's no too much eggs. So, so you get rid of the extra eggs. See like this? Get rid of the extra egg. All right. And to keep the hand clean, we're gonna do that, because I'm gonna do just a few of them. The idea is always to try to stay with your hand as clean as you want, and then roll them. Just roll them, you see? Really simple, roll them. All right, and then we take him, as long as the oil is hot, and we gently put him in. Gently put him in the oil. Gently and always away from you when you do it. You do it like, like this, not toward you, you see? So that's it, friends. All right, so now we're gonna take a, one of those guys right there. Hey, you, don't stick over there. And we're gonna get them beautiful golden brown. And that's gonna take a few minutes. And when they're gorgeous golden brown, we're gonna put them on a plate with pepper towels. I had pepper towels earlier. And I don't know what I did with it, but here it is. We're gonna continue doing it. A little pepper towels. Oh, I had it right here. I know I had it. <laughs> gonna put them on there like this, you see? Oh, it's my thing. Here it is. Make sure they're nice and pretty. We want them nice and golden brown. Not too much, but you see? They're almost there, friends. So take your time to do it pretty. You see? Here it is, look, it's gorgeous. Put them on pepper towel right away. You can do a little darker if you want, but I think they're pretty just like this. So you can make them different shapes. I like them to be bite size. And voila, my friends. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna continue doing them, and that's it. That's all there is to it, really simple. Well, here we go. They're right there, beautiful. So, you know, I serve them with the marinara sauce. You can serve with any sauce you want. You can serve them next to a steak, next to a chicken. It's delicious. However you want to do it. They... Oh, look. Mmm. I don't think I hear a crunch. But they're beautiful, creamy. Mmm. I love them. Put whatever you want in there. They're delicious. I hope you enjoy it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. We'll, watch, we'll see you in the next couple of days with another fantastic video. Thanks for watching.